I never say this in my videos, but I'm going to say it today. The information I'm going to give you in this video is so important, and the potential that this program offers is so spectacular that you cannot afford to miss a single minute of this video. And I know how YouTube viewers are. They'll watch a little bit of a video, then skip to another place, and then skip to another place, and then quickly move on to another video. But if you've just been diagnosed with diabetes and you don't have any idea what to do, you cannot do that with this video. You can't afford it. You need to watch every single minute because this could truly change your life. The only people who could accept a diagnosis of diabetes casually and not be concerned about it at all would be people who simply did not know how terrible this affliction really is. Anybody with any knowledge at all about diabetes would come home from the doctor's office worried, depressed, and scared. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is a normal and even a reasonable reaction to finding out that the terrible monster of diabetes has laid its icy claws on your life and your body. If there were a button you could push that would instantly change you from diabetic to non-diabetic, you would push that button. If there were a pill to take that would transform you from your present condition to the health you had when you were 25 years old, well, you'd surely take that pill. But there is no button and there is no pill that can take you from diabetes to a non-diabetic state. No, not even any collection of pills. Even insulin can only temporarily fix your high blood sugar one shot at a time, one day at a time. It cannot reverse your situation. But there is a strategy that can get you into the land of normal blood sugar. And this strategy is at the heart of the Beat Diabetes videos we've been producing for the last seven years. It's also at the heart of the Beat Diabetes four-month or six-month challenges we've been offering. The idea is simple enough. Instead of doing things that have proven over and over again that they're ineffective and they do not work and can only at their very best slow the deterioration of diabetes down a bit, how about taking steps that have proven over and over again that they are powerful and highly effective? In other words, they work. They just flat out work. They work for people of every age and every size and every race and every personality and every body type. Yeah, I know we're all different and there may have to be a few slight adjustments for these differences, but for the most part, this Beat Diabetes program I'm going to share with you is basically a one-size-fits-all, all type 2 diabetics, that is. I wanted to put out a single video that would give beginners the basic, simple, but powerful five steps that will give you what it is you really want, and that is non-diabetic glucose numbers. This means an A1C of under 6.5, hopefully significantly below that. The goal is that when you go to your doctor after six months, nine months, or a year, your doctor will be astonished and will tell you how unbelievable your progress is and then, if he or she has any sense, they'll ask you, how did you do this? And finally, they'll probably tell you those famous words we've heard reported again and again. Well, whatever you're doing, just keep right on doing it. I'm convinced that with five steps, most type 2 diabetics can achieve non-diabetic blood sugar levels in under a year, and many will see this in five or six months, regardless of how high their A1C is when they start, 8, 10, 12, 14, or whatever. Now, if you're taking medications or insulin, you'll need to talk with your doctor about how and when to start discontinuing them. But if you're going from a standard diet where you eat as many carbs as you like to the kind of diet that I'll be recommending, you will definitely need to reduce your medication doses to prevent dangerously low blood sugar. The late Dr. Sarah Hallberg once said that this kind of intervention is so powerful and works so fast, she could take diabetics off hundreds of units of insulin in days to weeks. Okay, there are five steps to get to your promised land. There are not 10, not a dozen, not a hundred, just five. Now, you can probably guess that you're going to make some significant dietary changes, but step one, which will be in month one, is a step that needs to be taken before you ever do much messing with your diet. And it involves this. 
For one month, you need to start testing your post-meal glucose levels and write down the numbers you get for various meals. You need to become a researcher and start collecting data on yourself. You desperately need to see how various meals and foods affect you. And you cannot do this by simply eating a meal and asking yourself, well, how do I feel? <laughs> you need the facts, the cold, hard numbers that will appear on your glucose meter or your CGM after you eat your meals. During this time, eat a large variety of meals, some high-carb meals and some low-carb meals, and test your blood sugar at about an hour and 15 minutes after you finish eating. This should be close to the time that your glucose levels will hit their peak. I know this can vary from one person to the next, but for most people, an hour and 15 minutes after eating will give you a good idea of how that food or that meal affected you. And it's not enough for you to know how foods affect Dennis or your cousin Billy Bob. You're going to have to find out how these foods affect you. Keep a journal of these foods and your post-meal glucose levels, known as postprandial glucose tests. Get fanatical about it. Spend the money on the test strips. They are a small investment in your life, your health, and your future. You need to have the blood sugar spiking nature of carbohydrates shoved right in your face so that you're not taking my word for this or any other doctor's word or any nutritionist's word or any YouTuber's word. You're getting your information straight from Mike the Glucose Meter or Charlie the Continuous Glucose Monitor. And this is extremely important. If you fail to do this, you're going to lack the motivation and the will to make the changes you're going to have to make. Don't skip step one. Of course, you'll need to continue to test your blood sugar long after this one-month period is over, in fact, the rest of your life to some degree, but in this first month, you will gain the knowledge and the motivation you need to whip this monster of diabetes and keep it under subjection for the rest of your life. And you can also use this time to slowly and gradually lower the amount of carbohydrates in your diet week by week. The remaining steps involve the dietary changes you're going to make. These will seem daunting at first, but when you see your glucose levels dropping steadily, <laughs> you're going to get so excited that the sacrifices you're making won't seem bad at all. Let's go on to step two, which would be month two. You've spent the first month just testing glucose, uh, testing your post-meal numbers, now it's time for step two, and that means getting rid of all sugary foods, all foods that have a lot of added sugar. And that means that the sugar bowl, of course, must go. But more than that, I'm talking about any and every product that has any significant amount of sugar added to it. And that includes instant oatmeal, granola cereal, ice cream, ice cream bars, cakes, pies, ketchup, yogurt, flavored coffees, canned fruit, most protein powders, protein shakes, sweetened almond milk, sodas, energy drinks, barbecue sauce, and far more than I could name. And this also includes honey. Your diabetic body cannot tell the difference between a spoon of sugar and a spoon of honey. Both will raise your glucose like crazy. And the same is true for fruit. Fruit has been bred and crossbred to be super sweet, which means super sugary. No more apples, oranges, mangoes, bananas, and so forth. You must be ruthless in this. All foods containing significant sugar are your enemies. They're destroying you. And you don't make peace with your enemies. You don't compromise with your enemies. You don't accommodate them. You destroy and annihilate them. Don't just take smaller portions of these foods. Your portion size for these monstrosities is zero. Zilch, zip, nada, not. You sue for permanent divorce from sugar and sugar-sweetened foods without the possibility of reconciliation. Now, if your body is used to lots and lots of sugar, it's going to throw you into a shock for a little while, and you may not feel so good. But hang in there. After you detox your body from sugar, you're going to feel better than you have in a long, long time. Because of the shock effect of major dietary changes, I would take a month with step two, cutting out all the sugar before moving on to step three. And step three, which would be in month three, 
is to further eliminate starchy foods from your diet, which would include corn products, all forms of bread, rice, breakfast cereal, potatoes, chips, pretzels, pasta, and so forth. What most diabetics do not know and what many doctors will not tell you is that starchy foods spike blood sugar just as much as sugary foods because starchy foods are made up of chains of sugar molecules tied together. And once you swallow them, those chains break down and you have a stomach filled with sugar. There is very little difference in the blood sugar spiking properties between a baked potato and a jelly donut. Oh yeah, there is a little difference. The potato will probably spike your blood sugar higher than the donut. Just like bananas will often spike your blood sugar higher than candy bars. And grape juice will spike your blood sugar higher than sodas. Once you've eliminated sugars, sugary foods, and starches from your diet, you can relax a little bit. You've made the major necessary changes you're going to need to make. Of course, at this point, you may be saying, well, what in the world is left for me to eat? I'm glad you asked that question. The truth is there's a great deal for you to eat. Basically, if you go back to step one, you can eat those foods and meals that created a very gentle and mild rise in your blood sugar. And unless you're some kind of a freak, that will include any meat that doesn't have a breaded coating. It will include low-carb vegetables, salads, almond flour and coconut flour food products like low-carb bread, tortillas, blueberry muffins, strawberry muffins, along with foods like eggs, bacon, sausage, nuts, and seeds. There are various non-sugar sweeteners that will barely raise blood sugar, and they can be used occasionally to create some tasty keto foods and muffins. Just don't overdo it. Do some tests with your glucose meter and find what works for you. Another guide that will help you determine the meals you should eat will be that journal you made in month one of those post-meal blood sugar tests you did. Any food or meal that does not significantly raise blood sugar an hour and 15 minutes after eating should be okay for you. You may want to retest some meals to make sure they're safe, but those early tests can be a great guide in formulating your menus. By the end of this month, you should be eating under 50 grams of net carbs per day. And that's per day, not per meal. Recipes for low-carb or keto meals and foods abound on YouTube these days. Go to the YouTube search engine and type in things like keto biscuits, keto pizza, keto bread, keto tortillas, keto lasagna, keto meals, keto recipes, keto scones, keto muffins, and you're going to find more recipes and wonderful meals and foods than you could possibly eat if you lived another hundred years. There are so many products marked keto that you can find in your grocery store, but experience teaches us that we cannot always trust them. But you can try them and you can test them and discover how they affect your blood sugar. To make sure that you do not overwhelm and shock your body with all these changes, I would encourage you to stay at this step for another month before proceeding to step four, which would be in month four. And that is where you will incorporate intermittent fasting, or as I prefer to call it, time-restricted eating. This is an incredibly powerful weapon, and it can get you moving at lightning speed to your promised land of normal, non-diabetic blood sugar. You've spent month one testing your blood sugar. Then in month two, you eliminated all sugar and all sugary foods. In month three, you eliminated starches from your diet. You're now in month four, and it's time for you to switch to eating two low-carb meals a day without eating any snacks between those meals. What you need to do is to go to a six-hour daily window of eating, six hours in the day in which you will eat those two meals, one at the beginning of that six-hour window and the other at the end of the six-hour window with no snacks in between. For me, what this means is I skip breakfast, except for a cup of bulletproof coffee, which includes heavy cream and a tablespoon of butter. I have my first real meal around 12.30 to 1 p.m., and my second and final meal of the day is around 6.30 or 7 p.m. with no snacks in between. This cuts my glucose spikes down tremendously. And for someone who's used to eating a high-carb diet and snacking frequently throughout the day, it would virtually be impossible 
(laughs) for your blood sugar not to come down eventually. For your glucose to remain elevated would be a physical impossibility for nearly all type 2 diabetics. Eating this way would be like dropping a ball off the top of a tall building. It's going to drop swiftly to the ground every single time. Whether you try it one time or 10 times or 10,000 times, it will always fall with no exceptions. And if you're skipping breakfast and eating only lunch and dinner, you don't have to do without your favorite low-carb breakfast meals like eggs and bacon or low-carb pancakes and sausage. You can simply move those former breakfast to 1 p.m. and make them your lunch. And believe me, the breakfast police will never come to your door and arrest you for this. But you could also choose to eat breakfast and lunch and skip dinner. For some people, this works better and it's perfectly fine. For most people, their glucose will drop significantly within four to six months of doing this. Some people do find it takes longer and usually this is because they are either A, a type 1 diabetic, or B, a type 1.5 diabetic and they have very little beta cell function left, or C, They have a tremendous load of fat in their liver and their pancreas, and it's going to take them much longer to see results as those who have less of this liver and pancreatic fat. Actually, type 1 diabetics can see great results as well. They'll still have to use insulin, of course, since the pancreas makes no insulin, but they will not have to take nearly so much insulin, and they will have far greater glucose control. They'll stay in range more than ever before. Additionally, they'll often find diabetic complications reversing and sometimes going away permanently. Now it's time for the fifth and final step. Step five, which would be month five, is to take one day a week and make it either a carnivore day, an OMAD day, which means one meal a day, or a day of fasting where you eat nothing at all. Now, fasting or OMAD should only be done if you're not taking insulin or diabetic medication. Otherwise, your blood sugar could go dangerously low. But if by now your doctor has taken you off all meds or if you've persuaded your doctor to permit you to go without meds for a few months to see what you can accomplish by diet, then you should be able to fast or eat one meal a day or simply have a carnivore day one day out of each week. But be sure and test your blood sugar during these days and make sure it doesn't go too low. I normally fast on Mondays of each week. Sunday evening is my last meal. Monday I don't eat at all, not even bulletproof coffee, although I do drink black coffee. And then I resume eating on Tuesday morning. There are some weeks, of course, where that's not possible and I don't do that. But for me, that is my normal routine. But if you take one day out of your week and eat very little, and what you do eat is very low in carbs, that means that about 14% of your week, you're giving your pancreas a rest and allowing your glucose to drop much lower than it normally would. And that's going to be reflected in your A1C. Now, there are some people whose glucose actually rises a bit when they do a total fast due to a heavy load of fat in their liver and an out-of-control dawn effect, and you'll need to decide whether you simply allow your glucose to be a bit high on that day, or maybe you need to eat some eggs and sausage or eggs and bacon and ham that day to ward off those high dawn effect numbers. After your fifth month, you've completed your five steps. In most cases, you will have seen significant improvement in your blood sugar level. But this is a six-month program, so what does the sixth month involve? Well, the good news is there are no more steps to take. Just keep doing in the sixth month what you were doing in the fifth month. Give your body another month, some more time to heal and sweep away all the excess fat and sugar in your cells and your glucose levels to continue to drop. I am convinced that these five steps over a six-month period would bring 90% of type 2 diabetics down into the non-diabetic realm with an A1C below 6.5, and many would even be in the fives. Do this over a year, and many more would make it. Now, this program is a little more gradual than the crash course that I've suggested in my challenges. And as I've done some research, it appears to me that a gradual lowering of glucose is in many ways superior to a cold turkey approach. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a future video. But remember this, Rome was not built in a day. And your diabetic condition did not arise in a day. It's usually the result of many years and even decades of making poor dietary and lifestyle choices. 
to undo 20 years of ever worsening insulin resistance in six months to a year is plenty fast enough. Nobody would tell a 400 pound man that he needs to drop down to a 175 in four months. It would not be healthy and it would not be reasonable. So take your time, be methodical, be persistent, and be determined. One foot in front of another. And know that the path you're traveling is one that many others have walked on and they have seen incredible victories over diabetes. And there's no reason you cannot as well. What I've just shared with you is at the heart of these beat diabetes challenges that we've been doing. I've given you, in a nutshell, pretty much all you need to know how to make incredible progress and go from diabetic to non-diabetic according to your A1C. The amount of time it will take you to get to non-diabetic levels can vary from person to person, but you can get there. If you follow these steps, you're putting yourself in a position that it becomes far more likely that you will beat diabetes than that you will not. The odds have just switched to your side, and not just 51 to 49, more like 90 to 10. Invest some time in this. Subscribe to my channel and watch all my videos that come out. They'll keep you motivated. And while you're at it, subscribe to Dr. Jason Fung's channel, Dr. Ken Berry's channel, and Dr. Sten Ekberg's channel. They're all excellent, and they'll confirm these things that I've been telling you. Well, that's it. What I've just shared with you are the nuts and bolts of a diabetes-crushing, A1C-lowering, insulin-resistance-reversing way of life that actually works. In fact, it works so well, the greatest mystery is why every single doctor is not implementing this with every type 2 diabetic. And you know what? Sooner or later, they will. But for right now, you cannot wait. It's time for you to get on board while there's still hope for you, while your kidneys and liver still function, while you still have the legs and the toes you were born with, and while your beta cells are still alive and have not crossed the line of no return. The ball's in your court, my friend. You now know what you need to do. The only thing left is to implement these steps and give them the time to work. You'll be glad you did. Probably most of you know my wife Benedicta, but few of you know the amazing paths God has led her to bring her to where she is today. Benedicta was orphaned at an early age and lived with an elderly stepmother growing to adolescence. They were so poor, Benedicta had to drop out of school and sell food door to door for them to survive. As a teen, Benedicta got a job as a housemaid, which developed into a nightmare. She was required to cook, clean, wash, take care of the children, and she had to get up at 4 a.m. every day just to get her work started. Worse than that, she was frequently beaten. At around 20, she moved to the huge city of Lagos where she started her own little business. Sometimes she prospered, but at other times she nearly starved and went days at a time without eating. At one point, she became so sick she passed out in her room and nearly died. She found herself outside of her body and she was able to see the splendors of heaven until she was sent back with a command to share her story. One day, however, her life changed when an American evangelist came to her community to preach. And of course, that was me. The rest, as they say, is history. Benedicta has shared her life story in a recently published autobiography, and you can get it on Amazon as either an ebook or a paperback. A link to this book on Amazon is in the description.